setting up their office and I wrote to them and said thanks very much for your letter about setting up the office would you like to come and see our students <coughs> and they said yeah we'd love to so they came to um, come really didn't come see any shows um, but they as a first year agreed to see everybody that wanted to be seen and as a result of that they whether you remember Jamie Patel, but they took Jamie onto their books and they had a further three people that they were kind of interested in, but they didn't know where they were going to be based. So they could only take northern based people on their books. Subsequently, somebody moved to Scotland and I know was seen by their Scottish office. Somebody moved to London and they were seen by their London office. That was the first year. So I kind of went to see them and said, are we going to do that again, or what should we do? And I was in their office in Manchester, and they said, Richard, do you know what you should do? Based on what we saw last year, um, with some work and with some support, you could do a London showcase. My jaw hit the floor, and I said, really? <laughs> not because I didn't have faith in you, but because I didn't know whether we would be going into a lion's den where we would be viewed as the country cousins to be ripped apart. You know, you know I, mean? I was really nervous that people would turn up to go, really, we've come all the way down, let's see what... Actually, I couldn't have been further from the truth. People were delighted. And this is why, and this is sort of told me to have more faith in, and to tell everybody else that, and you know, I, I suddenly realised that I should have faith in that. The other feedback was about our London showcase last year, how refreshing it was that everybody was so different, that everybody was genuinely wanting to explore their own creativity, which is what we think our courses are about here. If you go somewhere like I don't want to name, let's just go for X you know, place. They produce a product. You know what somebody from a particular place is going to be like. They turn them out for the industry. And the one thing that was, was telling was the, um, the agent who sort of gone along just to be supportive. She wasn't looking for anybody at all. But she came and spoke to me afterwards and she said, I want the number of whatever, She'd, I have to have her on my books. I wasn't going to take anybody, but I don't have anybody like her. I thought she was sensational and I want to have her on my books. And that's global artists who are massive. So we had, um, we took 27 people last year and we have seven signed and you might say, well, that doesn't sound very good. Actually, I found out subsequently that, I'm going to name them again, far too professional, X school, supposedly in the league above us, yeah, in other words, a drama UK place, took 
25 people and had three people signed. <laughs> and I started to think, why? And I kind of realised that it's because they turn out people who kind of are all the same sort of product. Now, that might be a very, very reliable kind of product, but if you've already got three people like that on your books as an agent, you don't need another one. You see what I'm saying? Whereas if we take some people who are interesting, they, they, they're kind of different, they're doing something that's not the same as what everybody is, is doing, then the chances are, and we certainly found that in seven people's cases, um, they were uh, you know, very favourably looked upon. Now, what I want to, so I just see what I was going to say, I can't remember, I did this last week, so. Right, okay, what is it? It's open to everybody. We do not choose who goes to London. We'll come back to that. It's for agents, casting directors, and other <coughs> industry professionals. Last year, we had all of those people. The other industry professionals, plus, for example, we had the woman who dug, I wish I could remember her name. I would do know her name, she wrote me a lovely email afterwards. I'll find it out again in case she comes again next year. But she was the, the dance person for P&O Cruises, and she supplied all the dancers to their ships. And she was saying, I really, really enjoyed the showcase, but I didn't get to see anybody dance. So I said to her, do you think we should take dancers next year? Because I was a bit kind of nervous of doing that, again, thinking, if you do try and do too much in a showcase, are you sort of diluting it a bit, you know, somebody comes on and does it, do you make it like a variety act? Do you know what I mean? But no, she said, actually, it would have been really nice to have some dance in there. Again, that might mark us out as something different again. Because I think the dance sort of process of auditioning, particularly for companies, is rather different. You tend not to sort of go to open auditions as a, you know, if the dance is your main thing. But I'm, I'm going to look into that, and I think we are going to open it up to dancers this year. So participation is by audition at Stanix. Um, and I think I'm going to do it a bit earlier this year, so it will be in sort of March, April time. Um, open auditions, completely open. Anybody can go, anybody can do anything they like. Last year both Judy and Anthony came. This year I'm thinking that we might um, have another person, I'm not going to say who that is yet, as well possibly. Okay. Um, Anthony's background is in dance, commercial dance, not kind of contemporary dance, but still he was a dancer, professional dancer for a number of years. Um, and uh, Judy's uh, an actress and turned casting director or whatever. And they are well placed in the industry. Okay? I really can't emphasize this enough. No staff from the university were involved in the selection of participants. How could we? We've been with you for three years. We'd love you all to go. But in the end, this is again part of your preparation for the real world. It stands and falls on what you deliver on the day in front of that panel of people selecting for London. You, there was equal amounts of delight at somebody who didn't think they stood a you know, cat in hell's chance and got selected because they knocked it out of the park on the day. Somebody who thought they were an absolute dead cert and everybody else thought they were an absolute dead cert and they didn't get selected and they were absolutely, sorry I'm getting emotional talking about it, absolutely distraught. It was really upsetting and I found it quite difficult to deal with because we all thought that person would be a dead cert and they didn't get selected because it didn't happen for them in the rehearsal room, sorry the audition room. So equally as much as we, we couldn't step in, it's not fair. If you're going to say there's no staff involvement, there's no staff involvement, which equally means somebody not saying, well that person's normally really, really good, give them a chance please. I'm not going to do it one way, I'm not going to do it another. It has to be you deliver on the day, and that's the only fair way of doing it. I'm sure you will agree with that, wouldn't you? So, um, you can showcase acting, singing, dancing, or a combination of these in June. Now, given that, 
the agents attend in their lunch times. That's why it has to be in London. And we went to Soho Theatre last year. I've got slight reservations about Soho, not for the, the space and the <coughs> location. It's fantastic. And the thing about it was that it felt very like Stanix. If I booked somewhere like the Criterion and you walked out onto a stage which is absolutely massive, gilt everywhere, balconies, draping red curtains, and you kind of like, you know, I've, never been, I've never been anywhere like this before in my life, you might not deliver your best thing. But in Soho, it felt very comfortable. My reservation about Soho was the bar afterwards. They told me that there wouldn't be very many people around having their lunch and so it would be very easy for us to use the bar and just to meet the agents afterwards. When the students came off stage to do the, all the networking and uh, handing and you know meeting people and doing all the important stuff about <coughs> arranging meetings because no one signs anybody there and then on the day they all arrange for a meeting to meet them in their offices and some people actually found that they didn't come back on the coach because they were invited to a meeting the next day and they had to suddenly think where am I going to stay in London tonight. Um, but then that was, a, that was a nice problem, wasn't it, to have to solve? Um, so, I actually, there were lots of people having meetings and lunch, and when the kids walked out, they couldn't work out who were the agents and who were just, you know, sort of randomly going up to people who were having their lunch and saying, it was really nice of you to meet. <laughs> <laughs> it was like nothing to do with it. So, what I would suggest, I'll come to you in a second, Mike. What, I would, what I'm going to do is there are other rooms, but the reason why we, we didn't book those is because there's an awful lot more money again. But the good news is because it was so successful this year, the university's come up with um, a good amount of money to spend. So I can afford this year to book the theatre and another space so that we can have our own private sort of buff the buffet was lovely. <laughs> and everyone was too nervous to eat. Can you imagine? It was this beautiful buffet and all the students were like, what's the other side? Too nervous. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was just going to ask you about the space. Is it the main space at the Soho yeah. or is it the upstairs? No, the main space. Right, the main space, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice, yeah. Very, very light standings. It felt really comfortable and, uh, yeah. Well, obviously, it worked out for us really well last year because I wasn't expecting them to do what they did. They were lovely to us again, so as much as I've just dissed them about the bar space. They couldn't have been nicer in terms of being welcoming or whatever. I was expecting to have to perform on someone else's set because obviously you're in the afternoon, you're at lunchtime, and if they're not going to sort of clear the whole week. And if there's a show in the theatre, then you have to use whatever set there is in the show. But it was a piece where, um, you know, it was a very minimal set. And there was a, a rostra that I was thinking like, oh my God, imagine so we'd, we'd all sort of choreographed this movement stuff and then they've got this, this change of levels, but they removed all the rostra for us. So it was a, a flat area that took all the set out and stored it. And so we were performing it like standing, just a black box kind of, kind of area. Has anybody, has anybody seen it? Yes, Have you seen the... Yeah. What the showcase? Yes, it's online. Yeah. Right, I haven't I haven't made it available because it's such poor quality. The the filming, not the You can't see people's faces at all because whoever operated the camera doesn't me hi. Um whoever operated the camera didn't white balance it properly. So the theatre lights washed out everyone's faces. They just looked like a kind of a blob in there, which is, you know, it sounds great, but... Yeah, you kind of had to guess who was singing if you've heard the single before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, right, that's that. Right, this is what you get if you are selected. A headshot that you can keep and use. Copies of your CV and entry into the showcase programme which was complimented last year. I spent a lot. I spent a thousand pounds. They were ten pounds each. They were embossed and they looked beautiful. And I was complimented that they were the best ones that they had the whole season. <laughs> uh, two days of rehearsal with a professional director prior to the showcase. There's no way that we would do it without that. 
it was slick to within an inch of its life. It was on, off, on, you know, no messing around, no fumbling or, you know, whatever. It, would, it has to be really, really on, on the money. Return travel to London, although again, some lucky people didn't need it. Uh, last year we went by coach. I kind of think that was nice because it had a sort of a, you know, building. You know, if you go by train, people's not quite the same feeling. I could afford to go by train this year, but I'm going to sort of think about that one. One night's bed and breakfast, accommodation in central London. <coughs> last year we stayed at the gorgeous travel lodge, uh, <laughs> Covent Garden. <laughs> and uh, most people were um, three in a room, and they were perfectly big, big enough rooms. So sometimes it was a twin bed, twin, twin beds, and a. <coughs> An additional bed, sometimes it was a double bed, and I just we're all adults, I just left it to people to work out their own sleeping arrangements. I have nothing to do with uh, room allocations whatsoever. Okay, um, yes. a short solo duo, duet, or monologue, duologue, or whatever, or dance, and the director's decision on the material is final. I don't want any messing around, or because this person we have deliberately employed somebody that somebody that goes to all of these things regularly, that knows exactly what they should look like. Okay, and the material was cut. It was edited. Sorry, I'm just rambling now. It was it was cut. People were asked to change what they thought was right for various reasons, because part of this process. Everyone thinks that at university it's about your versatility, which on one level, of course it is when you're training. You should do and explore a wide range. But when you leave university, it's not about your versatility, it's about what? Your castability. You might at Stanix be asked to play someone who's 43. In the industry, you never would, because they don't play a 43-year-old or somebody that's looked that, you know? So you need to choose material that is going to mean that you're castable in whatever you choose. And if you do not look like the leading man, do not sing that kind of song. If you do not look like, you know, the happy princess, and, you know, don't put yourself forward as that. You need to understand that, and these, these people will help you with that. Once you've got in as something, then you can start becoming more versatile, but your first foot in the door is about kind of what you're castable as. So it's the director picks what you do? Not necessarily. Most people, who's happy with most people's choices because... But you either do it, you can't do a song anymore. No. You have to, they you will either pick. Everybody sang because we did, and where there were people that wanted to highlight the fact that they could sing as well as the fact that they could act, we gave them a little short bit in, a, in the company song, yeah? Or where it was the case that somebody wanted to show acting and singing, that we gave them a, so, a kind of very acty, actressy type song, like Jill Dees, for example, who did Miller's Son, uh, because that's all about the acting. And, and of course, you have to be able to sing well as well. So it's about choosing material. Not sure how we're going to deal with dance, in case anyone's going to ask. Um, I'm going to take advice. Yeah? I would think that we would have, again, some sort of ensemble and some sort of duet. Yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, because we didn't do it last year, I haven't got the answers to that. Um, yeah, you get to get the, the group numbers and you get buffet lunch at the venue and a chance to network with the agents. Right. £65. But if you don't get through, £50 of that gets refunded and you just pay the £15 which means you get the headshot and the uh, to use. Yeah? So, if you, the university has, in, has assured me that we can start this in January and if you wanted to pay in instalments, you can pay 20 quid a month or whatever it is. Oh, wait, okay? Everyone sees the camera. Absolutely, you pay before you audition. Okay? And I did this last year, so don't try me on it.
If you are not selected for the showcase, you will have the £50 returned to you minus £15 for the headshots and CVs, which you will have to use, and that's a bargain. And also, even for people that don't want to even audition for the London showcase, I'm going to see if they want, you know, the headshots, and they can, they can have one anyway. Right. I'm going to make this really clear from the start. If you do not attend your audition or withdraw from the showcase, either before or after the audition, for any reason, including but not exclusively, changing your mind, <laughs> employment, illness, holidays, whether these reasons are in your control or not, e.g. jury service, imprisonment, <laughs> you are not entitled to any refund. So please think carefully before you send in the application <laughs> form. Right. There is no way that I can jeopardise everybody's involvement <coughs> by not having enough people, right? So I'm, I'm going to tell you roughly the date. I can't tell you exactly the date now, but I can tell you the week um, that it's going to be in London, okay? Again, you will, we will give you as much notice as we possibly can, probably two months, and we won't put it against a, you know, one of our major shows or performances or whatever. Both of these things apply, whether it's the audition at Stanix or whether it's the audition in London. You aren't really <coughs> getting your money back. Somebody said <coughs> to me, you know, well, last year somebody um, decided they, they, it was more important for them to book a holiday. <laughs> you know, went on holiday instead of going um, on the showcase. Are we genuinely serious? Are we genuinely serious? Yes. Yeah, we don't know how it's all like costs, I mean, could be so much. So, um, you know, last year, because I wasn't entirely, I had to raise all the money last year. I raised £6,000 to do it. This year, I don't have to raise quite so much because the university's given us some money up front because it was so successful. So, but I still have to ask for a contribution, and I think, you know, sort of 50 quid for all of that, a night in a London hotel and the show. I mean, we are massively, massively subsidising it. Massively. I could say that word again. Right? This, well, you can't actually put a price on this if you were to get through and get an agent and start a career and, you know, it's completely invaluable. But I'm not prepared to mess around and to say, oh, well, I'm sorry, you didn't, like to, you didn't want to do it anymore. No, he paid his money back. No. If you, you, we have to get real as well, because some people, like we don't, but some people charge 30 quid just for an audition to go in a university place, don't they? Yeah. You don't get that back if you choose not to go on the day, do you? So why should we be any different? This is a genuine opportunity. Pay your money and if you are, if the only, we, we will say really sorry you're not selected and, you know, Obviously, you get the money back immediately. Just gets put back in your bank account. So, is it 100% that dance is included somehow, or is that something yeah. to be confirmed? No, it's 100%. Okay, we just don't know completely. I've made yet. the decision. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah, but I think it really depends <coughs> on what kind of styles of dance people want to showcase because I think it would be kind of pointless showcasing certain kinds of dance if there was really not going to be anybody there to... Yeah. So we'll yeah. get more information on yeah. that. But, ah, more information. Right, here's another thing. You, my friends, get the people there as much as me. I'm prepared to do it. We, we sent out 600 invitations to every single agency. But the people who really got people there were the people who followed those up, who made the call, and you decide, right, I need to have X person there. You see how this links with ARPS? If you've done your research, and you think, I want this kind of, somebody from this agency there, or I need somebody from this dance company to go, I will be dancing, I want to sort of persuade them. The best way of doing it, and we do have people out there that can do this for you, is for people who we have, or people that maybe you know from a previous place, to go along with their agents. Because people like doing that. I had somebody, this, this is why this person that I said from, um, from Global Artists turned up, they came with a friend of mine. And I said, I'm a bit worried. I actually rang somebody up and said, I'm a bit worried that, that the number of people that are gonna be there, because it's the first one, nobody knows who we are, blah, blah, blah. Will you, will you come? He said, oh yeah, would you like me to bring my agent? I said, yeah, that'd be great. 
so dutifully made a little phone call. I'm going along to the show. You come along with me. Of course, I will. Agent showed up because they like to, you know, have meetings every now and again. He rolled it in with a meeting with his agent and took them for the buffet lunch and. It was just a nice thing for him to do with her. <coughs> oh, they love freebies. We have, to get, we have to have a free bar for the agents as well, not oh, for you. Oh, for us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> However, I did it by tickets. And somebody managed to swipe, swipe a stack of tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and I caught them, dealing them. <laughs> I mean, you know, I will put water in your dressing room. You can have the lunch. I did. I will order enough lunch for people. And I do. I do think you buy your own wine and beer. So yes. Yes. It will be. Crimson, yeah. Well, I think there's a week that starts the the ninth. Is it June? Monday. Is that a Monday? That week. Oh, no, finals in June, Richard. Trans finals in June. They might well be. Trans finals in June. So what? Our country's good finishes the summer. Yep. Don't be the week after, probably the Thursday. But that's a bracket, yeah, because that's not better. No, no. No, it's not. It's a rough guess. If I can't go for that, we can't have to go for the week after. But I'd rather do it. The, the problem we had last year was that there was a gap and people didn't know whether to go home or whether to stay or whether to... And I thought if I make that decision kind of early on, yes, we, what we did then was if we were doing it on the Thursday, we had Tuesday, Wednesday rehearsal, Thursday show. We travelled down on the Wednesday evening, stayed, stayed Wednesday night, got up. Yeah? So you probably have... Have a day off, but get used to it, folks. You want to be busy? You want to? Ideally, you see, what would be happening if you were working, and this is what happens to at least one person who got signed up. They were in a show in the evening, they were rehearsing a different show in the day. Otherwise, you, you, you keep not, you know, you, you, you risk not being paid or having a gap in between employment. Yeah? It doesn't always happen like that, but she's really, that's Vicky, Vicky Hitchin. Who didn't get signed at the showcase, but then got herself two jobs immediately after by networking. And then she went back to the agent and went, I'm working, don't sign me now. She was going to say no. She already had two jobs and they could have been earning money off her, of course they signed her. <laughs> Agents. Ha! Ah. 12% for doing nothing. 15% for get someone in EastEnders. Yes. Would you say that you need an agent? Like, no. No? What's, yeah, what's your opinion on actually needing an agent from a lecturer point of view? I would say um, it depends what kind of work you want to do. If you want to fast track and you think you're able to do that, then an agent is very very useful tool to do that. Can you get there without an agent? Yes, but it's a harder slog and needs more luck. That's my view. If you get the wrong agent, it's worse than having no agent because it means you lulls you into a false sense of security. You need to be doing work as well as the agent doing work. So if you get work that's not through an agent, you don't pay them the 12%. It's only if they get you the work. Nobody, by the way, nobody should be paying anybody any money to be signed on by an agency. They should only, be, a reputable agency will only pay you when they get you work. They will take the money from the contract, not require you to pay 500 pounds up front for listings on websites. That's an absolute scam and don't do it. There's plenty of free websites you can list. The only one where you have to pay for the listings, which you should do if you're going to be serious, is Spotlight. Which costs and we are eligible because you are training you've done three years of training with us you can be listed in spotlight actors not spotlight graduates spotlight graduates is only for people coming out of drama uk training but we can go straight we're, we're, we're on the list that allows you to go into spotlight actors which um, 
you, you can't if, if you didn't have the training with us you couldn't do that until you were working then then you can list and that's one more stage you have to get so with spotlight that's where people go to look at your nice photos to read your cvs and to and any reputable casting process will use that except for like small scale stuff which sometimes uses casting called pro or you have so, so that's not bad either but that's much cheaper isn't it some people are already on that are they how much is it now 30 quid or something mm -hmm. yeah but then all of these things what are you on there for if you're kind of working do you know, do you know what i mean you've got a long contract i've come off it you've got like a year or something or six months even sort of you're not available so even if people cast you you wear a spotlight you have to pay for the year i think it's kind of worth it to get your face out there yes um you know the initial audition how long do you get well actually you get a bit longer then and people could do two things in that and people and he did sometimes say can you um you know do anything else you should just prepare more than one oh yeah definitely thing. can you prepare differently so you could do a monologue yeah. and a song okay. yeah. Because the difference there is, I pay them to do that. Yeah. So if I wanted them for two days and then it took a bit longer, I could do that. So I will make sure that pe people were in there for 10, 15 minutes last year mostly. So they saw 50 people. Sometimes people were in there for shorter than. Do you know, do you know what Jamie, Jamie did? He was really cheeky. We asked people to do a, a song in my Joe couldn't sing for Toffee, well, so he thought. But so he did a monologue, and he said, "Can't really sing, but I'd like to dance for you." <laughs> so he brought this kind of hip hop type CD and did all his body popping huh. stuff. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh that rubbish then? That's <laughs> great. Do it again. And, uh, and they just thought, they just liked him because he had the nerve to do that, and they thought that. The fact that he had the confidence to do that meant that he would, and actually he was good, he wasn't just you know, messing around, <laughs> unlike me. <laughs> you have a hand over here somewhere. Um, will you what? like a little video when you're going to take part by a certain date? Yes. No, not, probably end of January time. But again, somebody's situation changed, could they go in at the last minute, I guess, if there was space, but it's not. How will, we, how will we let you know? Do we just have to email you? No, I'm going to do another one. Another one. There's one already done. I'm just going to recycle it for this year with a different date on it. Yes. So, another question about the other side of it. Mm -hmm. um, for, the, sure. <laughs> sure. for the original audition, yeah. by then we would kind of know the kind of people you've invited so that we can cater to that. No. I, I, would, I would get in it first and then so say, and then say to him, who do we need to have there to see me? And then we'll work on getting okay. them there. So it won't depend on what you no. did in that audition no. didn't affect you? No. Because they didn't they won't confirm until the actual week. We had to send them an invite, send them I sent them <coughs> three emails, and then a week before we phoned them up, and then on the day, on the coach on the way down, people who'd sort of said, Yes, we're coming got reminders. We're really hoping to, we're on the way down from London, uh, from Carlisle now, we're really hoping to see you tomorrow, you're still able to come. Oh yes, just take a name and we had a list of names at the door. Now, again, it didn't mean that everybody showed up and some people came that weren't on the list and some people that were on the list didn't come. Because it's people's working life, you don't know what's going to happen that morning. If they've got a crisis or whatever, they're going to sort out their current clients with, you know, we do know that. So, we had 45 people there. So I thought that was good for a first go and I'm hoping to have nearer 100 this time. Because I think that hopefully we can sort of tell people who went last year and put a few quotes on about. So we had some lovely feedback, honestly. So would your suggestion then be to pick your strength to say like Dance or whatever you've got loads of different styles. So would you say pick the style that you're strongest in? I would, but, like but then, but then he might well say, "Do you tap?" Or he might say, "You know, is this this?" Because it, it will be on your CV as well. Remember, and he's so used to seeing people, and you know. So you just cater to the people later on. Yeah, he'll he would like maybe say the way it works sometimes is I have to take her now. Let's work out how she goes in the show. 
and he'll work with you. That's what he did last year to showcase you. It's all about showcasing you. So what you, but that's partly you say, but also somebody might say from your CV, "Oh, you've got this here. Can you show me a bit of that? Oh, yeah, we need to put that in. How can we put that in?" Okay. He was good at it. He was really good at it. Some of you over here was. No, I've been, I'm favouring the left. Um, how long? You have a shot. Um, <laughs> how long will it take? Like, say they want you in the showcase. How long will they let you know? Um, like, is it? Know how many day. days will it take for them to say they if you've been you? The there on the day. Mm -hmm. There and then. Everybody back in. Oh right. Okay. So okay. All these people are going to London. Sorry, everybody else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and then I stood by with the box of tissues. For overjoyed weeping and bereft weeping equally. Oh, God. 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 Have you not decided whether it might be a name? Um, <laughs> program, the way dance for you, something like that, isn't it? I would have thought that if we're going to do a group, a bigger group piece, then we'll need a choreographer. I would have thought if you're going to do maybe a duet or something, then maybe you want to showcase your own choreography. I, I, I get. I take advice on that. I have to have a conversation with him about it. Is it like the first audition for the start in Stanix? Oh, in Stanix, I do your own. Just do your own solo. Yeah. Will it be in Stanix or will it be in? It can be in the studio. It can be in the dance studio. Can be in the dance studio. For that section, we'll say right. Okay, after lunch between one and three, we're going to have all the people that want to do dance. That's fine. Over. We didn't want to use the theatre last year. We did it in a room in Stanix House, but we could equally do that. Uh, just because it just felt that ramped it up too much. We used S13 and we would go into a dance studio to, to do that. Because the kind of auditions that you would do, they wouldn't be in theatres anyway. They're often in like these rooms in, that they've booked off by the hour at Equity or wherever in London. So they're often not that glamorous of places where you go. So it's not different from that. So that everybody and I was just going to ask, I think, Sort of really the question. So in your initial audition, if you like dance whatever, can you go in with two people? You could, so if you like oh, yeah. duet, you can go in and do a duet. Yeah. Or we encourage that. We, we wanted um, duets and duologues and, you know, so that it's not just, it breaks, it breaks it up, it makes it more interesting to watch. And we were really, again, praised by the variety of, of, of the showcase. Can you imagine sitting there at lunchtime and you get, 40 heart-wrenching monologues that all come on. You want, to, you, know, you want to go to the bar, don't you, after about four? Whereas if you have you know, interesting piece of dance, entertaining monologue, a couple of nice songs, big group number, you kind of go, oh, this is like a show, this is great. That's what, we, that's what we put together. And I think that really worked, and that's what we would be trying to do again. But it is, you don't want to have something in there that kind of like sticks out, you know, some bit of you know, a ballet or something, and then you use it and then you go, what, uh, have I gone somewhere else? Yeah, so it needs to kind of flow. Um, for the original showcase, in terms of singing, is it a case of backing tracks only, or could we um, find someone to rehearse? Yeah, we had a pianist. We had a pianist. I think either is fine. But we had, we, yes. The problem with having a pianist was that Again, I've got the money so I could do it if that's what you want, was people getting to rehearse with them. People wanted to rehearse their pieces. But in the industry, you wouldn't have that opportunity. You wouldn't, you're quite right. But, but it was, again, there's you, nothing from stopping you taking your own piece. <laughs> no, it's true. You could take your own piece. Everyone looks unhappy. <laughs> no, I was going to say, um, last year from Wright, Steve Lemon played for half of the yeah. on those lines. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Do we have it? What was that idea? Partly because Steve wanted to showcase his abilities as a musician. And they're 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 gold dust, so if people see a good one, you're just as likely to get booked for a gig as you would. I think um, well, the feedback that I had about that was if there was somebody that 
they've just been let down by a pianist or a musical director or whatever, but that morning they had found a replacement. If they hadn't found a replacement that morning, then there would have been an offer made. Do you want to come and do this show? But again, that's, that's what I mean by luck. You know, you're in the right place at the right time. Somebody's there, somebody goes, oh, that's all you need. So if you want to do that, yeah. But I didn't think it was fair to give somebody, but you, you might feel differently, the entire responsibility for the whole thing. So we did a, one was page turner and people swapped in and out so that they, you know, played to their strengths if you want, or they felt comfortable with it about the amount that they rehearsed. Because it was quite pressured, it was only two days to put it together. Um, and particularly the two group numbers, they literally were decided and rehearsed in those two days. And I believe, actually, did, um, Steve did play for both of those. But then there were other pieces of song time, particularly, that he didn't feel comfortable with playing for, so Stuart played those. Are we done? Okay.